Hey guys, my name is Pixie. Today we're going to create multiple sections on one screen using tabs and a simple animation. I'm going to hide the status bar and title bar on screen one, but other than that, we don't need to make any property changes for screen one. Start by adding a horizontal arrangement to the screen called container title. Set the alignments to center center, height is 75 pixels, and width is fill parent. I'm going to set the background color to dark gray, but you actually will never see this color. Right now it's just a placeholder. Place a label inside of this container. You really only need to change the font size and text color of this label. The actual text can be whatever you want it to be. Just like the background color of the container, this text entry is just a placeholder. I'm going to rename this component to label title. Add a canvas below container title. Set the width of the canvas to fill parent. Then place an image sprite inside of the canvas. I'm using a small 10 by 10 image for this sprite. It's actually just a solid color, nothing too fancy. Set the X and Y property of the image sprite to 0, 0. Select canvas 1 and change the height to 5 pixels. It's a little difficult to see our image sprite now, but it is still there. The background color of the canvas should match the background color of container title. I'm selecting dark gray, but again, this color is just a placeholder. We don't need to worry about renaming the canvas, but we probably should rename the image. I'll call this Sprite Slider. Drag another horizontal arrangement onto the screen and call it Container Tabs. Set the alignments to Center Center, height is 75 pixels, and width is Fill Parent. Add four buttons inside of this container. It might be difficult to see the fourth button on the screen, but it should appear in the Components window. These buttons will act as our tabs. You can call these buttons whatever you want. I'm going to pretend these are buttons for a user profile, kind of like what we've been doing lately with the Fusion and Firebase tutorials. I've got the Material Icons font installed in the Media folder. You may have seen this font before or similar fonts like it. We're using four different tabs in this example, so I'm going to find four icons that match those tabs. I can browse a list of icons on the Material Fonts website. For example, I can use this icon for the Profile tab. The name of this icon is called Account Circle. So if I have a label or a button and I set the custom font to Material Icon, then I type Account underscore Circle, those words will turn into this icon. For Button View, I can use View List. For Button Add, there's an icon called Add Circle, and for Button Edit, there's an icon called Mode Edit. Each of these four buttons will have the same properties. Font size will be set to 30, font type face custom is of course the material icons font. The height should be the same size as the container tabs and the width of each button will be set to 25%. Change the shape from default to rectangular and use the appropriate text. So for button view, the text should say view list. Now in design view, this is gonna look a little weird. When we run the app, these words will turn into icons and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. Pause this video and finish editing your buttons however you'd like and unpause this video when you're ready to continue. When you're ready, add an image component below container tabs. This is just going to give us a little padding between the tabs and the content. I'm going to increase the height to about 20 pixels and set the standard invisible.png image that we use for all of our padding. Add a vertical arrangement below the padding image. Set the horizontal alignment to center but keep the vertical alignment at top. The width and height should fill the remaining space on the screen. You can rename this whatever you want, like container main. I'll just call it middle. Click on screen one and temporarily check the scrollable option so we have a little extra design room. Add four more vertical arrangements inside of the middle container. Our first tab is called button view, so we'll call this container view. The second button is called button add, so we'll call this container add. The third button is called Button Profile, so we'll call this Container Profile. And of course, we'll call this Container Edit. We're not going to focus so much on the style of the container right now. Start with Container View, and let's just change the alignments to Center Center. You can check the Is Card property or leave it unchecked. I'll set the width to Fill Parent, but don't worry so much about what it looks like. You can play around with it later. 
I'm going to continue setting the same properties for each of these vertical arrangements. And as I do that, I'm also going to add an image inside each of these containers. For right now, just put something in each one of these containers so you can visually tell them apart. The point is to understand that these will be four different sections. When you're finished playing around with the containers, add a clock component to the screen. Uncheck Timer Always Fires, Keep Timer Enabled Checked, and set the timer interval to zero. We're going to use this clock for a really simple animation. Click on Screen 1 and make sure you uncheck the scrollable property. We just needed that option for a little extra design room. Go ahead and test the app before we move on and see what it looks like. We've got a title bar with some placeholder text. There's this little tiny bright blue image sprite on the canvas, which we will animate with the clock. The button's text has been transformed into an icon, and we can see the first two containers, even though they're two different sizes. We are done with the design. Now we need to fix the colors and make these tabs work properly in the blocks editor. I have a color scheme using four colors, white, dark blue, light gray, and a normal shade of gray. The active tab will be the section that the user is currently viewing, so we should only have one active tab at any given time. The other tabs will be inactive, and we usually indicate something is inactive by using shades of gray. The active tab will have a background color of white and a foreground color of dark blue. White is a preset color, so I don't have to worry about the active background, but I will make my own color for the shade of dark blue that I want. The inactive background color will be a shade of light gray. We do have a lot of gray preset colors, but I want this gray to be very light, so I'll need to make my own color. The inactive foreground color will also be gray, not too dark, not too light, somewhere kind of in the middle. Notice that I've named these colors after their hue, but feel free to name these active foreground, inactive background, inactive foreground, or whatever helps you identify these colors. Add four more global variables. Call the first variable button list and set this to an empty list. Call the second variable container list and also set this to an empty list. The last two variables will be called index and x, set both of these to zero. We'll use these variables to pass values into our clock. Now we can initialize our list using our standard initialize list procedure. We have two lists, one for buttons and one for containers. We have four buttons on the screen that we're using as tabs and we have four containers on the screen that we're using as sections for our content which means we'll need four items in each of these lists. Button list will contain the four buttons that we're using as tabs. Add these buttons to the list in the order they appear on the screen. Do the same thing for the container list. Add the containers in the order that they appear on the screen. Obviously, we have other sections that we've coincidentally named container title and container tabs. We only need to add the containers that reference our buttons. We also need some default settings when the app starts, so let's create the initialize screen procedure. The image sprite we placed on the canvas was very small, but it needs to be the same width as each of our buttons. Remember that each button is set to 25% of the screen width, which mathematically works out perfectly. We can set sprite sliders width to the width of any one of these buttons. I'm just going to pick button view because it's the first button in the list. I initially set the container title's background color to dark gray. But that's not the actual color that I want for the title bar. Instead, I'm going to use the dark blue color as the title bar's background color. For this design, the background color of the canvas needs to match the title bar, so I'll also use dark blue for the canvas background. Create a procedure called switch tab with two arguments named button and title. Before we move on, call the switch tab procedure in initialize screen. What we're doing is setting the tab that we want to be active as soon as the app starts. We could choose any one of these four tabs, but I'm just going to select the first tab. Set the button argument to button view, and let's make up a title for this tab. So when we click on the tab, this is the text that will appear in label title. When we switch tabs, we need to loop through all of the buttons in the button list. We also need to loop through all of the containers in the container list. Scroll down to any component and set any button dot background color. So this will set the background color for all of the buttons in the button list to whatever color we specify. In this case, the background color should be color light gray. We're going to do the same thing with the text color of each of the buttons, except we'll set the text color to color gray. Right now on design view, all of the containers are visible. So we need to set any vertical arrangement dot visible to false. So visually, 
we've made all of our buttons the inactive colors and we've hidden all of our containers. Let's update label titles text to the title that we passed through this procedure. And we can also convert this text to uppercase. Now we need to make only one button and only one section active. Set any button dot background color of component button to the active background color, which in this case is just white. So I can use the preset white color. We also want to change the text color of the active button to dark blue. We have our active tab. Now we need our active section. The buttons and the containers were placed in each list in the same order. In this example, we're using button view, which should be index one in the button list. That means that container view is also located at index one in the container list. So global index in this case would equal one. Set any vertical arrangement of visibility of component to grab the selected list item in the container list matching global index. And of course we need to show this container, which now makes it our active section. Keep in mind that index actually doesn't need to be a global variable. It can be a local variable. I was planning on doing something else with this variable and then I decided against it. So feel free to clean this up as you see fit. We do need to set the value for global X because we need to pass that value into the clock. Global X requires a little subtraction and multiplication. We need the width of a button multiplied by the index. And remember, it doesn't matter which button you use for the width because they're all the same size. Our goal is to get this little blue bar above our active tab. So we just subtract the width of a button, which would place the blue bar at X equals zero. And you'll see that in action when we test the app. We're almost done. We need to call the initialize lists and initialize screen procedures when the app starts. Now we can make our buttons work. Grab the click events for each of your four buttons. We set button view as the default tab when the screen starts. Then we can just copy and paste this call to the switch tab procedure directly inside button view dot click. What do you think we should do for the rest of the buttons? If we click on button add, we should switch the tab to button add and let's set a title that makes sense like new user. If we click on button profile, we should switch the tab to button profile and let's set a title that makes sense like profile. And of course we'll do the same thing for button edit. We can make the little blue sprite slide across the canvas inside the clock timers event. We need to slide the sprite left or right based on its current X position and the position it needs to go to, which is global X. Our conditions are if sprite slider dot X is less than the global value of X, else if slight sprite dot X is greater than global X. If the current value of X is less than global X, the sprite should move towards the right side of the screen. This value is how quickly you want the sprite to move. So in this case, the sprite will move five pixels towards the right side of the screen until it stops moving. Otherwise, the sprite needs to move towards the left side of the screen at negative five pixels. And of course, you can play around with that value. Maybe you want it to be faster or slower. That's totally up to you. Now we can test the app and see what it looks like. When the app starts, we see that the title says view all. The little blue bar now fills the entire width of the button and our buttons look like tabs. Our active tab is button view. Now my inactive color selection is very light. If the colors on your monitor are set really bright, you might not be able to see the color difference between this really light gray and the preset white. So it's up to you if you want to use different colors, but there is a distinct difference. I chose white as the active background color to match the background color of the screen. So when we're on an active tab, the screen has this distinct shape. Click on each of the buttons and notice that the section changes, the tabs become active or inactive, and the little blue sprite slides across the screen to the active tab. Pretty cool, right? Good job, guys, we are done. Guess what, guys? We just hit 2,000 subscribers. Can you believe it? This is so exciting. I've also created an official Facebook page and a Patreon page, so check those out in your free time. Don't forget to visit the Appy Builder community where you'll find more tips and tutorials created by community members. That's all for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Don't forget to thumbs up the video and have a great day. Bye.